Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Sophie Cape. Hi, Richard. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to see you again, too. Uh, and your exhibition is Flashpoint at Olsen Gallery in Sydney. Um, and, and your work over the years uh, has always been elemental, filled with elemental forces. And certainly this exhibition seems to be as well. But this is quite a different exhibition for you. In what way is it different to past exhibitions? <laughs> I asked you to figure that out. <laughs> um, it wasn't about me, this one. This was more about humanity and what Australia, the nation was going through and what the world was going through. And I let go a lot more than I normally would. Uh, the works are a lot rawer uh, and more honest. And um, it was kind of terrifying to make and let go of this show. I feed off what's going on in the environment, in the world, in myself. And, um, but I chose this time to really let go and see what happened and try not to control it as much as I usually do. And like I said, this year I discovered a whole different side of my practice and a whole different side of myself and why I work the way I do and why the, I live the way I do, like through my art process. I mean, I, I don't know what I do or how I do it. Like, it's very frustrating. Like, it's kind of like alchemy or something like that. Like, I'll go back and look at a work and I'll go, oh, that's, that's kind of, I kind of like that. I wonder if I could do that again. And I have no idea. And it doesn't matter how many times I experiment, I can never replicate it or figure out how I did it. So, and it's, as I'm always mixing something with this, and but every artwork is related, closely related to a, the location it was made in, the place I was in, and what was going on in the world. So my works are very, very much a combination of my internal and external landscape and what's going on at the time. And I use the materials that only that are on hand in that location as well. So interestingly enough, a lot of these works from this show, um, I mean, it's not all about the bushfires, but a lot of the areas I was working in had been affected by bushfires. So there was a lot of ash and there was, I found this amazing stuff. I don't know if it was um, uh, melted car parts or melted houses or melted aluminium or I, mm. I don't know, but it was like this uh, uh, parts of metal things that had just been so intensely heated that they disintegrated into metallic dust in all these different tones. And I just collected them all and I used them in the works. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what they were. I'll never be able to find them again, but, um, <laughs> we, uh, we, um, we have some, uh, images of you working, creating, uh, or at least one of uh, the pieces in the snow and we see both yes. snow and burnt trees. Uh, tell us about that location and about that process. There are certain locations around Australia that uh, I'm very passionate about and Threadbow of course is one in particular because I spent half my life growing up there obviously as a ski racer um, and I went there um, on uh, an artist residency and it was just after the fires had gone through and the snow had fallen and all the trees were pitch black and the snow was just like white white chalk white and it was absolutely strikingly stunning. And I just could not help myself. I dragged these canvases out into the snow and I threw ink on them and charcoal on them. And then I couldn't find the works because the works were so completely in tune and it's similar to, to the landscape that I, I actually, I, there were four works out there. It took me two days to find them because they just look exactly <laughs> the same as the landscape. So, um, that was kind of wonderful. So um, that was the start of the first four works and I wasn't expecting that. And that kind of happened instantly. Um, so there we go. That was the start of one lot. And then I did a residency in Grafton, which was fantastic. And I found this, um, uh, what those trees that with the white bark 
the paperback trees that have bushfire had gone through right next to this amazing lake. And um, the fire had run through so fast that it had burnt the center of all the trees and left the tops white and the bottoms white. So that, I thought that was just spectacular. And all the ash from the barks was on the ground. So I used, I used that sort of scenario and a whole lot of works came out of that instantly. I mean, when I say works, I mean the start, the, in, the initiation of works. And then of course they go back to the studio and get resolved. I'll figure out which way's up and all that sort of thing. Um, and then um, lastly, the rest came out of um, the area around Jiangong. Mm. So um, when I was down there, um, the beaches, so it, the strangest thing happened on the beaches where the ash came in and the, um, it, it, I mean, they looked look like my paintings already, like I had to do nothing with them. It was beautiful, like well, it's, it's horrifying, but beautiful. All the waves coming in were black lips and you had these like beautiful curves and marks, all the lines, exquisite sort of mark making all the way up the beach. And there's quite a couple of works in the show that are literally just about that and nothing else. And um, also the blood rain that was flowing down, it was like, it wasn't that the cars were covered in dust and then the rain was white. It was like, you would be driving along and the rain that was falling on your car was red. It was just so surreal. Some elements in, in at least some of the works in uh, the exhibition can very definitely or strongly seem to be read as landscape. Um, for example, uh, loud was the bird rock sky uh, even seems to have contour lines in it. And there are other works which seem to have landscape and trees and horizon and perspective. Uh, is that intent in planning or is that something that just arises from process? Again, arises from process. Process is the most important part of my practice. Uh, as I said before, it's, it's not the outcome, it's the making for me. And 90% of the making of the work is done, has to be done in the landscape. That's what I feed off. I feed off the landscape, the place I'm working in and what's inside here and what's going on in the world. So um, I use the elements around me, the dirt, the soil, uh, the trees for brushes, the um, charcoal to draw with, the, I mean, what the bones, the sticks, I mean, whatever's there, that's what I use. Uh, I don't use normal paint. I don't use, um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't really use art shop uh, materials and um, that inspires me and it's not I don't go and draw paint a tree I paint the feeling of the tree the feeling of the space and what I discovered it was really interesting that we did this residency in Grafton and I was very self-conscious about it because everybody rushed out and started making artworks finished artworks straight away and I was like god that's I just I just don't work that way. And um, I realized that, you know, it was, it was sort of five days into the residency and I was still pottering around, walking around, feeling the space, doing studies, getting to know it. And it wasn't until the last day that I finally laid out all my canvases and just annihilated them. And <laughs> just, I was black from head to toe and I just went for 12 hours and just killed myself but I I, it, I got it I got it was about that for me it was about listening and waiting and feeling the space and connecting with the space it's not about looking at it and painting the picture of it it's about the essence if that makes sense it's more I don't know no uh, no look that it makes complete sense um and when you talked about the materials that you that you find, uh, many of which are on the location where you're creating the work, how do you decide which materials you would like to include? I noticed, for example, that in, uh, in, in one of the works, there's even what appears to be a, a very large feather. Um, you know, but how, how do you decide what to include materially in the works? It has to be in that location. So it... it I call it fortuitous, call it whatever, I don't know. It ends up in the work. 
it gets blown in because I also leave the works overnight. Um, if ideally I leave them out for weeks or months, but in that case, it could, it was only sort of a day, but, um, or I, f I find it in that area or on that trip. Um, it has to be from that location. Um, because it, for me, it has to make sense to that. It has to connect to that space. It has to be symbolic for that place. You mentioned um, also that, that so much occurs through process and you're not quite sure how it's going to end up. Uh, but also the mark of your hand is very clear sometimes. Uh, there is um, a, a wonderful graphic rendering of a, of a kangaroo in one of the works. Um, somewhere else we might see something that is quite clearly a series of drawn marks which appear to be that the boughs and branches of a tree. So your hand does intrude as well or takes a very active part as well. It does. See, I, I find mark making the sexiest thing in the world. I think drawing is the sexiest thing ever. I love it. I love it so much. Um, I can't get enough of it. And it just, I just love it. And I see it everywhere in nature. And that's all I see it in the body too. I see it in everything. I love drawing. I draw all the time. I have sketchbooks after, that's all I do. Even like when I'm out in the bush and I'm not painting, I just draw and draw and draw and draw. And that's, I never take photographs of places. I always just use reference from my sketchbooks because I find if you draw a scene, you pick out, <clears throat> sorry, you pick, pull from it what you find exciting and you use a mark that you find exciting that you see. Whereas if you take a photograph of that and take it back to the studio, you just see a gray mat, a, a green mass or whatever. You, and it, it, there's nothing there that you can use in, uh, your work in the studio. So I just, I just find drawing really sexy and I just love getting stuck into a big chunk of charcoal or a pastel or a pencil and just, just scratching, drawing, set, just letting it flow, taking a line for a walk as they all say. Um, and I just can't help myself. And, but I mean, often I'll close my eyes often, it's blind drawing. I mean, the, the kangaroo was a blind drawing. I had a pet kangaroo for a couple of years who I loved dearly, um, who traveled around with me when I was painting. And um, unfortunately I lost him, but um, that's quite a symbolic work of my uh, friendship with him. He was called Baudelaire. Mm. Um, Anyway, in a number of the works as well, uh, there are written words. Um, they're not always yes. possible to decipher as words. I don't want them to be read, read, but they are very symbolic words uh, relating to that space or uh, metaphorically uh, a message about what was going on with myself, with, with that location. Uh, at that time with the nation or with the landscape. I mean, they're very, very pertinent, relevant words, but um, they're not meant to be read. They're, uh, I guess, a graphic element that's a sexy mark <laughs> with, with a meaning, a symbolic meaning that I don't want you to know. <laughs> as you as you describe um, the making of each individual work is a, an entirely immersive process in that individual work, but when those works are up on a gallery wall, do they speak to each other? Is there a sense of connection between them that you feel? I don't think they do when I'm making them, because they all come from something completely different. But. Um, Yes, each show, it's funny, each show when um, they're hung, sometimes I go, oh, I might put up, I might put this work in from something else that I was doing and I try and it's impossible, it just doesn't fit. So they definitely, every show has to be made together, most definitely. To conclude, let's look briefly at your titles, and I don't mean each title, but the process of the titles. They are, they are thoughtful and literate gatherings of words and thoughts, but what are you trying to do with the titles to the works? Well, they're abstract works, 
and I want the titles to be poetic and abstract as well because I have made the works from um, my position, but I want anybody to be able to read their story into these works as well. So I often have people come up to my works and say, I can see my story of such and such and such and such in this work. And I love that. I, I don't want to pin down um, anything specific with each work. I want them to be open-ended so that um, anybody can find their own meaning and their own um, connection to the work themselves. Well, I'm sure many people will enjoy the process of finding that meaning. So, Sophie Cape, thanks very much for sharing your exhibition with us. Thanks, Richard. <laughs>